to distinguishable rapport. Distinguishable rapport. Now you hear a lot of people in this industry talking about creating good rapport. And can we agree that rapport is critical? Yes, yes. Right, I mean obviously. Having rapport is critical. I would say that's even a no-brainer. You want to have a good connection, right? You want to connect with someone on a way where they feel comfortable, you feel comfortable, you're getting along, etc. But let me ask you, if that's your only goal, what's the challenge with that? Well, I would suggest, what's that? Getting it to the next, Getting it yeah. to the next level. Yeah. And also, I think these days you have a lot of agents who are already good at that, right? A lot of people are good at holding a conversation, you know, having interesting things to say, right? So much of rapport training has been, well, find interesting topics to talk about and find engaging topics. And that's true. I'm not downplaying that, right? But you have a lot of people now who are good conversationalists and, and good at connecting with people, all right? But one of the challenges with that is some of it doesn't go as deep as it could and it's not always as, as, as well directed as it could be. So I want to suggest if you're not already doing this, if there's a prospect or someone you want to meet with that is really valuable or worth your while, this doesn't have to take a lot of time, doesn't have to be too involved, but be willing to do some research on them. Do some basic research. Even if it's just looking at their professional profile and saying who they are and what they're up to. You can check them out on social media. Let me, let me make this clear to you or, or official if you're not clear yet. You can look someone up on social media and you're not stalking them. If you look them up on social media, I officially give thee permission. You can look up anyone on social media and it's okay. Now, stalking can be a whole other issue. One sec, okay. But just to see, even if you don't, you can see the basics on their profile and very often from their photos alone, you can see who they are and what they're up to, right? And maybe you see a hobby they're into. I had someone approach me, I do a lot of deep sea fishing down in the Florida Keys. I love it down there, right? So I had someone approach me and say, oh, I see you're a fisherman, I see you enjoy that. They were, they were pursuing my business and they started with that. Do you think I was open to listening to what they had to say? No. Yes or no? no? Yeah, it was. I'm not saying it led to, <laughs> why wouldn't I, right? In other words, they didn't just call me with the official company line, right? They, they said, hey, listen, you know, I've noticed that, that that's something you enjoy. I've gotten down there. He knew some of the spots that I knew. There was a client that I, that I worked with for years, very lucratively, who uh, owns a PNC insurance company, a property and casualty commercial insurance company in New Jersey. Runs a very successful business. It turns out that he and I both went to the same college. I went to Florida State. I graduated high school. I said, why is everyone going to SUNY schools? I don't want to be around the snow. I want to go to the warm weather. So I went down there. Turns out that's, he had went to school there as well. So I, oh, I found that out by just looking at his bio, his professional profile and his website, right? So when I connected with him, do you think I led with business and value propositions and, and coaching and consulting services? No. I said, hey, listen, I see you're a, a fellow Seminole, which is the, the mascot, you know, the, the logo, if you will, the character for that, for that school. We hit it off. I'd say the first hour of our conversation was about that. And then we eventually got around to business. Right? When you can find some point of either commonality or just something of interest to them, right? That you can embed into the conversation quickly, it can be an immediate lubricant for that, for that conversation. Does that make sense? Yeah. It takes a few more minutes throughout the day. I know you're busy, but if someone's worth it, it's, it's worth doing that. Right? Just, just check them out and it's worth it. It can give you an edge in the conversation and it shows that you put in some effort uh, to doing that. Right? And, if, and a part of that, is you find out what some of their passions or hobbies are. Well, once again, just looking at some of their social media photos can show you that and, and what they enjoy. And you find a way to embed it. And if you really want to go out of your way, you find some way to, to speak to that or something interesting to mention to that. This is like related to that, maybe not the same exact thing. But I had another consulting client uh, for several years who was a, uh, a life insurance. He was a general agent. So he owned an entire life insurance agency with uh, Northwestern Mutual years ago. Very successful agency. And I kind of got my foot in the door, and we'd done some business together. But I was like, how do I really crack this guy's code, right? So I found out that he, he's a fan of comedy. He likes stand-up comedy. So I got him several like bootleg CDs of comedians that I knew he loved that were not publicly available. But like kind of, you know, underground, you know, bootleg recordings. 
and uh, it, it was very, I downloaded it off the internet, so it didn't cost me a lot of money. That blew the relationship wide open. He literally brought me to his house, okay? I helped his wife grow a personal training business. I, I coached his managing director. It was, like, it was like a really, that one little thing about finding someone's interests and, and what they really enjoy, you know, made all the difference in the world.